Hi, it's me again with Kirill Roll Tips and Tricks. This video is going to be called Double Click, and I'm talking about double clicking your mouse button, mainly your, your left mouse button. There's a lot of tools that you can do when you double click something. One of them is the pick, well, let's, let me draw some more items here. Um, turn some of them red, some of them blue, some of them different colors. Anyway, if you have all these items on your page and you double click your pick tool, it picked them all. Matter of fact, it picked something out there that's not even, I didn't even draw that I had from a previous page. This is pretty cool. You can double pick. I say, I don't want to do that. You can just hit delete. So you double pick your, your tool. I don't have a, I should have, I didn't get very ready for this. There's a line. We're going to go up to object and convert it to a curve. Well, it already is a curve. It's got, I'm going to add some nodes. I'm going to add a lot of nodes. If you double, if you have that selected, you can double click on your shape tool and it's going to pick all your nodes. And then you can move all your nodes. You can do the same thing by selecting them. But if you're right here and you want to double click, the next double click is the zoom tool. You know, there's a F4 is a really big tool for me. I use F4 a lot and it would have just helped me just now. Um, so there's the F4 key. What the F, and I don't know if you remember earlier in the video, there was an item there that was invisible, but it was on my, you know, way over here. If I hit the F4 key, it brings up, so if I'm zoomed in on my page, I know that's there, but I can't see that. If I unclick it, it even goes away. It was there, but if I unclick it, so I can hit the F4 key and it, I'm going, well, it didn't zoom in over here, so there's something there. You can do the same thing with your zoom tool. Wow, I zoomed too much. So let's say we're zoomed in here. If you double click on your zoom tool, it zooms to everything on the page or on or off the page. And then you can see things like that. And just while we're here, you can always go view wireframe and that object's gonna show up you know, like that. I very seldom ever use wireframe, but it's very important in that case. So you can double click that. <clears throat> this is, I use this probably once a week. Not so much, with nothing selected, if you double click your rectangle tool, it put a, well, I'm using somebody else's file. Let me change that real quick. I'm gonna double click on that. I'm gonna hit F12. Or graphic, I'm gonna make my graphic a hairline and RGB red, because that's the way I draw. So if you don't have anything selected and you double click your rectangle tool, it puts a rectangle around your whole page. But what I use it for more so, let's say, let's say I've got a, a plaque and it's this big and let me move the double click into it. And we've got some, we got some graphics. And then, you know, right down here are some text. I'm having trouble tonight. Let's grab it all. Let's put it to the top left corner of our laser. I want to make sure that that text, which is F4, is going to fit. You know, I do uh, up. I engrave from the bottom up engraving. A lot of people engrave from the bottom down or top down. <clears throat> if you engrave from the top down and it gets down here and this F4 is off your page, off your plaque, you just messed up. So what I do with that F4 or text selected, hold down the shift key and double click your rectangle tool. It puts a rectangle around that shift, around that text. And then that way you could run a, red dot pointer with your lid open and have it cut it because I draw in a cut line, a 
cut line around there where you're not with your lid open, it's not going to fire. And then that way you know your text is going to be on your wood. You can double click on the on the um, ellipse tool, but it just comes up with the ellipse and what you want to set your default. You want to set it for ellipse fire chart in 90 degree starting angle. The other thing, and the only other one I know it does is the double clicking on the pick tool. So let's draw, let's just have a little bit more text here. Just type it randomly. And let's put it here. Let's hit the plus key, put the next one here. I didn't hit the plus key correctly. And let's say you have one more. And you've got, so you've got text all over your page. Let's get rid of my F4. If you will double click on your text tool, all your text come up. I want to hit the delete button and they all went away. What is kind of important about this, and, let's, and what you could do in this case, let me get rid of these boxes. see I'm going off the page to select that box. So let's say I'm gonna, I want to select all that text. Well, I could just select it. But you can also go just double click, you know, just select the text. And then you could change your points here. And you could actually take the shift tool and click on that one. And now you just have this bottom text. I can't believe it's 100 points, but let's make it 50. So I selected all the text and did that. And if I went too fast on there, when I hit double click the text tool, it's going to select all the text. And I'm going to take the pick tool now and deselect that one because the, the shift tool will deselect it. Then I can make them all blue. I can make them all larger. I can make them bold. So that's pretty important. There's other ways to do it by going to edit and, or view and, well, somewhere there's find text. Um, yeah, find and replace. But you can go up here and find all your text, but you can also find it right here. Uh, select all. You can select all text. And you've got that right here. But since you're right here, you can just double click on your pen tool and it'll select all your text. Anyway, that was a little bit confusing, but I hope to help a little bit. Thank you.